I'm currently a, a postdoc at ETH Zurich in Switzerland, and I'm continuing work in mechanics and biology, particularly with 3D printing and tissue engineering. And I've found in all of the different interdisciplinary projects I've done that it's typically um, not the engineering and the technical parts of it that make the projects the hardest, but it's often just finding how to work with other people and how to communicate what you're doing properly. One thing that you'll find as an early career engineer is that engineering requires communication no matter what project you're doing. So these can be in really large scale projects such as um, space exploration or renewable energy, or they can be in really small scale projects. So anytime you're designing software or trying to make a product, you're going to have to work with business and industry and psychologists to try and understand how your user is going to use your product. One of the first things I found out was that this cell is more complex than almost anything we've designed as human beings. So a cell has nanoscale interacting parts, and the cell interacts throughout our body with other cells so that we have trillions of these tiny machines interacting to make one function work. So if you think about a muscle contraction, that happens through the coordination of quadrillions of these small protein machines that allow you to move or lift an object. Working on these projects, I found that there is a big difference between how scientists and engineers approach projects. So scientists tend to want to analyze the world. They want to try and understand what's in the world, whereas engineers, we want to create something new. And so this can lead to a lot of different conflicts in thinking and how you're going to approach the project. With these conflicts, I found that there's some general principles that can enable you to communicate across disciplines, no matter what disciplines are involved. And these include considering the different knowledges of the disciplines. When we think about knowledge, we can think of um, biologists. If they were going to describe to you how you walked or how your leg worked, they would talk about things very qualitatively. Whereas engineers, we want to know the material properties and the dynamics of the system. So in order to create a complete picture to engineer something, we need to go across those borders. Because engineers don't typically have understanding of molecular biology, it's important to kind of um, describe how the cells work in relation to something we already know. And we found that there's these tiny motors in your muscles that work very much like two-stroke engines you'd find in many different engineering applications. So they cycle around. Um, they use energy. They convert one form of energy into mechanical motion. And then you can describe proteins the same way. So now we can engineer these parts of the cells and create useful products. We can then create models and simulations that we might show in video form. And through showing these videos to biologists, it gives them a demonstration of how we take their knowledge and represent it from our engineering paradigm. Once you simulate that and show it, you can get on the same page, and then you can move forward on the project. When you think about skills, scientists are going to be trained to do different things than engineers are going to be trained to do. I thought I could do the biology experiments as well as the biologists, at least these very simple ones. But it turns out you have to be very precise when you're doing these molecular biology experiments. I found that I had different skills to bring to the table as an engineer. And we worked together to create virtual labs where we could change parameters of these systems to design them and conduct experiments in the computer before we actually do it in the lab. And so what this did was it saved time and it also saved money. And the final guideline I want to talk about involves the different values that these two disciplines bring. So scientists, they tend to um, live by a publisher parish model. Um, we do that in engineering too, if you're an academic, but we also, want to make applications. We want to take that knowledge and do something useful with it. If you only focus on the publications or the science, or you only focus on the application, you're going to disengage these people with other goals than your own. And once you start disengaging your collaboration, the project's going to fall apart. And all of that work you put into communicating cross knowledge and skills is going to go to waste. You know, a lot of times, you can gain a better scientific understanding of something by trying to build or design it. So by doing this with molecules in our simulations, by building them or modeling them until they broke, we kept interest with the scientists, but we were also able to move forward in our own product design and bioengineering. And every discipline is going to bring something unique to the table. However, 
A good start is always to remember to respect the other disciplines and to consider what different knowledge, values, and skills they bring to a project.